Okay, um, in this part, we are, we are going to deal with the, uh, uh, how to calculate the discharges from a given um, river flow data, stage and uh, velocities. So usually when we measure a river system, um, uh, we have uh, the river and uh, we do the, the river cross-section. We divide them into a small amounts of uh, the, uh, the lengths and then uh, in that particular lengths we measure the depths and uh, then we, we, we can use uh, one of the, uh, the, the meters to, to convert them to discharge like um, the mean area meters and the mid uh, area meters. So, uh, in any ways, uh, we, we all know that the discharge is the area times velocity, which means from this data we have to come up with a discharge or for the velocity. So uh, first of all, uh, we have a, this is our depth, and uh, this is this is our depth, and this is the distance from the left bank or from the right bank. So uh, we can see the plot of uh, these two distance versus depth. So if you have depth in y axis and distance on the x axis, then they insert and. Uh, see this one to see the river cross section okay and um, this can be this is a this is an inverted form so if you want to change this you just come here on this axis and right click and then uh, format axis and say in a reverse order okay values in reverse order so here is what you have then this is uh, you can use uh, formats Quick formats. This is uh, h in meter, tabs in meter, and uh, this is tabs in meter. Then, and this is going to be the distance from left bank. Right bank in meter. Okay. So these are your, this is your valley. So uh, we we can divide these uh, river valleys into the several cross sections. And for a single cross section, we can take a velocity measurement. And velocity measurement can be taken at 0 0.6 or 0 0.2 d or 0 0.8 d. So usually, at the banks of the rivers, this place and uh, this one. We measure the flow velocities at 0.6d and um, for the, the, the uh, central sections uh, where you have a larger uh, depths, you measure the velocities at 0.2d from the surface and at 0.6d uh, from the surface. D represents the depths of your river at this particular point. So uh, the first thing is you can find the area. So if you have to find the area, we have to calculate the B first. For the, the, the corner parts, we can calculate area with uh, approximate with a triangular section. And for the, the, the mid sections, we calculate the areas by using uh, the trapezoidal upper. So first, let's find B. So B at this particular point, B which means at this particular point, at the starting point, uh, we uh, can consider it as zero. And but B at uh, this point one, which is um, uh, 5 meter, this is 4 meter, so this is uh, 5 meter. The width uh, of this cross section at 5 meter is from this one to this one. So this is 4 and this is 5, so we can take is equals the current distance minus the previous one. Okay, and then you can do the same because the 6 is the, the next section, and then 6 minus 5 is another B. So if you do the same for the rest, uh, there is your base. Now, um, at the end, um, at the end, uh, you can have you have uh, the end is at the point where you have 26.5. At is at zero B. Okay, you have zero value there. Uh, yeah, zero point uh, six five. This is great because uh, um, at that point uh, we have zero. Yeah, we have zero and. Um, and then uh, you have to calculate the area. So at this point it is uh, there is no area. Area is zero. And at this point uh, it, is, it is considered to be a triangular section. So uh, this is equal to uh, uh, 0 0.5. Uh, 
uh, times the triangular section this is your B multiplied by H this is the dibs then if you say equal to so this is your value then you can uh, you can calculate this part as a trapezoidal section which is B the width is okay, multiplied by uh, the D 1 plus D 2 over 2 okay. so this goes as uh, so up to this point so we have zero area at this particular point and uh, this one is um, our area at this particular point so now uh, we can calculate uh, the uh, the volume I'm sorry the the average uh, velocity V in meter per second so and the area is in meter square okay. so uh, our B is in a meter and um, so the velocity is 0.6d and the corners uh, so the average velocity the same as uh, the 0.6d velocity so up to this point is that works but at this point is we have uh, two point velocity so we take the average of the two so 0.2d velocity and uh, 0.6d velocity divided by two will give you the average velocity then um, uh, you can calculate uh, the rest at this particular point is the velocities are the same as this ones okay so you have to calculate them uh, in that manner then now once you find the velocities and the area if you multiply area times velocity q then you will obtain a uh, discharge in meter cube per second so this is equal to area multiplied by velocity this is equal to uh, uh, this one so if you want to find out the total discharge that is passing through a cross section, you have to take the summation. So if you take sum, and uh, this value means it is the amount of discharge passing through your, through your cross section at an instant time. Okay, so if you want to see the velocity distribution, uh, you can take uh, the distance from left bankers or the right bankers as uh, the x-axis. Uh, and um, the velocity as the y-axis okay and uh, if you insert a graph and uh, curve it like this you can see the velocity distribution through the cross section so at the corners we have zero velocities at the middle you have very large velocities that reach to 0.3 meter per second and uh, you can do the same if you want to see the, the, the amount of discharge passing through a cross section so here is your distance from left bank and uh, here is your uh, your discharge um, calculated discharge and then you can say insert and see the curve uh, this is the discharge uh, the, by, by volume so at the center I have like uh, more than 0.5 uh, meter cube per second so with that you can see the discharge distributions also Okay, this is how, how we can uh, calculate the discharges by using the midsection method. And um, the other thing uh, we can see here is uh, the area elevation curve, how to develop the area elevation curve. So, um, usually this is uh, the elevation, um, uh, this is the area, area at, at a given uh, stage. Uh, this, is, this is usually be computed by, um, um, by planimetry. So and this is uh, the respective storage values. So if you want to draw uh, the area elevation curve, we can use, use simply read um, volume and area with respect to certain elevation. Uh, you can first draw your area, um, your elevation as X and uh, your area uh, as Y. This is the first one. So plot this curve. This is what you have. And uh, add another data over here. Okay. Again, and add it uh, uh, with X as uh, an elevation again, uh, because the elevation is a common value for both storage and area. Then as a Y value, you have to input the storage, and then you can see uh, both both data here. So you have to change uh, one one Y axis uh, uh, in order to have the the nice shape of the flow, uh, the elevation. Um, yeah, the, the storage area so I click on this axis and then uh, 
uh, format axis uh, then uh, you go to uh, values in reverse order for one okay sorry the uh, you have to uh, you have to go to the axis option first and uh, you have to go to the um, format axis and the, the primary sorry you have to select this one first and uh, this one uh, primary axis and then uh, this one uh, should be format axis and then values in reverse order then uh, you can uh, minimize uh, this value or you can fix uh, the, 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 the minimum value to the like uh, 1000 for example then you will have your curve like this so um, it is your curve and uh, you can have a quick layout okay. so uh, this is uh, this is uh, the elevation area curve this one is you can see that here and uh, this one is uh, the elevation volume curve Okay, this is how we develop uh, this one.